Can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me now? Those days are gone, right? We don't have those cell phones anymore. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We got those microphones now. Can you hear me now? We're not going to have praise and worship tonight. And uh, yeah, so we're going to double up on the word. So uh, praise God. Um, teens, you can go ahead and go back to your class. Uh, Luke's not here yet, but uh, uh, Destiny and uh, Heather are going to get you started. So you guys can go. Praise God. Teens, teenagers, teenagers. Hello, teenagers. You can go to your class. Nikki, Destiny, they're going back there. Luke's there. Okay. All right. Praise God. Okay, so we got cameras on tonight, so everybody move into these first two chairs here, all the way back. We got two empty chairs here, two empty chairs here. I can't sleep here. Yeah, I know you can't sleep there. Yeah, see, they'll be watching you. Your wife's watching you on camera right now. So you better not sleep. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let's go ahead and uh, pray, and then we're going to go ahead and receive the offer. Well, let's put our offering uh, uh, um, prayer up there, all right, Jeremy? Praise God. You all ready with your offering? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your teens are all back there, buddy. We have a new member over here, Jerry Hargis. Is, uh, yeah. What are you doing on the ba- that? The boat's off balance here. Oh, okay, all right. All right, here's your offering prayer, guys. Let's read it together. Lord, as I give of my tithes and my offerings, I believe souls will be saved, people will be healed, delivered, and set free. I believe I'll always have a great job, raises, promotions, and bonuses. I believe for sales and commissions and favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income. I believe that I find money. Blessings come on me and overtake me. I always increase and I never decrease. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my needs and that I have more than enough so that I may give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for supernatural debt cancellation. And I believe I will never be broke another day in my life. Now lift your hands and thank him for it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank you, Lord, that you look over your word to perform it as we receive this offering tonight, Lord. We've counted blessed, anointed, and received into the work of the ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead and receive the offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you all ready for your world to be rocked tonight? Glory. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. My comforter, my counselor, on him I do depend. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. You all ready? Grab your Bibles, everybody. Lift your Bible with me. Say this out loud. This is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. I do what it says I can do. I am what it says I am. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever-living, the ever-producing seed of the living God. Father, I confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Sonny is awake. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same. I'll never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, Vicky, if he falls asleep, just give me a call and I'll wake him up. (laughs) Hallelujah. We love Sonny and he's uh, always here, praise God. We love all you guys and we appreciate you being here tonight. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Psalm, chapter 82. Psalm 82, the 82nd Psalm. We'll begin reading in verse 1 through verse 7, and this is in the Amplified Version. This is an awesome, awesome portion of Scripture when you really dig into it. 
And we're talking about uh, understanding the authority that we have. And we're going to be talking about in the weeks to come why we have the authority. We're going to fine tune that and really get into it. This psalm says this. It says, God stands in the divine assembly. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Vindicate the weak and the fatherless. Do justice and maintain the rights of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Rescue them from the hand of the wicked. The rulers do not know, nor do they understand. They walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction. All of the foundations of the earth are fundamental principles of the administration of justice are shaken. I said, you are gods. Indeed, all of you are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you will die like men and fall like any one of the princes. This psalm is very interesting in the fact that Jesus is referring to us and telling us that we're gods. We're not gods of God. We're gods over this planet, all right? And he gave us authority. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, he gave man, he made man, gave man authority, said to have dominion, have authority. Know that you are rulers over everything that creeps upon this planet. But then we learn that Adam gave that authority over to Satan, and Satan became the god of this world. But, thank God, it didn't end there. God had a plan, and he sent Jesus, praise God, and he got that authority back to us. But the thing that people need to realize today is that we do have authority over our uh, domain, over our uh, environment. Now, I don't have authority over you, but I have authority over my own life and my household, sickness, disease, and poverty. We're going to talk about how to release that authority in the weeks to come on Wednesdays. But I want you to know that If we don't learn to walk in the authority that's been delegated to us and what has been given to us, then he tells us that we're going to live just like every other human being that, you know, they die prematurely and they suffer needlessly and they go through torment their whole lives. They don't have the answers. But praise God, we've got the answers. And as we have the answers, we need to use those uh, answers, praise God. Amen? If we just allow the devil, he'll run over us uh, in every area of our lives. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, even after you know who you are, the devil's not just going to let you have your own way. Uh, as a matter of fact, when you begin to learn these things, he's going to push on you harder. And so you can't start to learn these things and then back off. If you're going to learn this and you're going to come on Wednesday nights, you need to dig in and you need to learn how to apply it and pressure that devil, amen? So we've been following in this from a different direction. We've been following it from the life of Christ. And what I wanted to show you in this is that as a man, and we've talked about this. How many have not been in here on Wednesdays before? Okay, a couple of you. Okay, so what we have established up to this point is that because we're man, because we're created and we're put on this earth, we're the ones that have the authority. And because we have the authority, uh, we can take dominion and control over circumstances that we don't just have to live life, whatever comes, comes, and just deal with it. We have authority, all right? You have authority over your finances. You have authority over your health and cure. But we need to appropriate that and learn how to use it, amen? And so we've been studying the life of Jesus, and we've been proving by the Scripture that he walked on this earth as a man anointed with the Holy Ghost, amen? You remember when he was uh, baptized in the river, Jordan, uh, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and the Lord said, this is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. And then we read in Acts chapter uh, 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus. All right, now, the, the, the common misteaching or misbelief of, 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 among religious people or church people is that Jesus was here doing the miracles that he did, doing the healings that he did as the Son of God. Now we know Jesus was here. We know he was God manifest in the flesh. But the Bible, we found this in the Bible, that he stripped himself of his divine powers, of his divine Godhead powers. So he walked here as a man anointed of the Holy Ghost. Now if he was here doing works as God, 
Why did he wait until he was 30 years old before he started doing any miracles? Because he needed the anointing. His body, his earthly body, gave him the authority, but God gave him the power. You're, you have a flesh, bone, and blood body. That gives you authority here on this planet. But you have to have the power of the Holy Ghost behind you. Amen? And so if you're born again, you're a candidate to receive that power. Amen? So Jesus was not doing his mighty works in his Godhead power. So I, I made this statement to you, and I said this, that, okay, was Jesus just as much the Son of God at age 20 as he was at age 30? Then why wasn't he doing any miracles at age 20, or 25, or 26, or 28? Because he needed the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now, if Jesus was here in his Godhead, uh, why did he need to be anointed? He didn't. All right, so why didn't Jesus do any miracles then before uh, the age of 30, before the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Because he couldn't. Amen, we're going to talk about this some more. So, all right, so we've shown you that uh, because Jesus was born of a woman, he was here legally. Any spirit or anything that's here uh, not born of a woman is here illegally. Somebody would say, well, pastor, I don't understand then. If we have authority over the devil and he's been stripped of his authority, then why is he still causing problems? Well, because people don't know that they have authority. If you don't know that you have authority, if you don't know what you have, you won't appropriate it. I've got to be honest with you. There are a lot of benefits here in the United States that I'm unaware of, but I take advantage of everyone that I know of. Amen. And the more I find out, the more I take advantage of. But see, if you don't realize the place where you work, when you hire into a place, you should ask your uh, personnel director, the moment you hire in, you should ask for a copy of the SOP, the Standard Operating Procedures of that place of business. I got the manual one time when I worked here at a place in Oklahoma City. I said, I want to see the SOP. And I got it, and I studied it, and I read it, and I learned about it. And you know what? Everything was going along fine until one week they worked me a little bit of overtime, past 40 hours, and I don't remember the whole SOP, the way that they had it set up, but because of the way the hours fell, I wanted to take a couple of days off, and they said, if I take those days off, I lose my overtime. I went back and looked it up in the manual, took it to the personnel director, and I said, that's not what your personnel, or your uh, SOP says right here. It says that if I work such and such up to this time, I get paid the overtime, whether I take a day off then or not. And I don't remember the whole thing, but it, I proved to that person that I had the legal right to take a day off and not lose my overtime. You see, but had I not known that, they would have docked me that pay and I would have never known. You see, there are a lot of benefits that we have. There are over 8,000 promises in the Word of God that we need to be beneficially applying in our lives. And we need to study it constantly. Amen? Turn to John chapter 10 and let's look at verse 1. We found out that Jesus was born here legally. Oh, and I was going to tell you, the devil has been stripped of his power, but he's not locked up yet. He's still running loose. Amen? How many of you know that criminals, they can get arrested, put in jail, and then they can bail out, and they're still running around out in public doing their thing, waiting for a trial or waiting to go to prison? Amen? I think once they get arrested, there should be no such thing as bail. Let them stay there. <laughs> Keep them in there where we're all safe. Amen? Well, the devil's out on bail, I guess. I mean, he's out running loose, and he won't be locked up until uh, Revelation. Amen? So we still have to keep an eye on him and keep our authority over him. John chapter 10, verse 1. Now watch this. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. He's talking about Satan coming into this earth illegally. He was not born here. Amen? Now, he was created by God. Amen? And so we can see that he is here illegally. Turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Let's look at verse 5. Hebrews 10, 5. Say, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Who's this talking about? talking about Jesus. Amen? 
says all of the sacrifices and the offerings uh, weren't what God had done, but you prepared a body for me. You see, the sacrifices and the offerings didn't make it so Jesus could come in legally, but he had to come through a womb just like you did and just like I did. Amen? All right, so let's talk about this then. A lot of people read through the New Testament, and they believe that Jesus was doing miracles because he was the Son of God. But I'm going to show you some more scripture tonight that's, that's just not true. He was doing his signs, his wonders, his miracles as a Son of Man anointed with the Holy Ghost. Now, if you came from a religious background like me, the first time that Brother Hagin said this, I wanted to leave school. I thought, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's preaching blasphemy. But you know what? I just sat there and listened. I was paying good money to listen to a man that knows how to overcome, so I'm going to shut up and listen to him, even if I don't understand it. So the, well, let's talk about this, the Son of Man and the Son of God. Turn to John chapter 5. Let's look at verse 26 and verse 27. You know, I don't want you to think that I'm just making this up just to make you feel good. Amen? I want you to feel good about it, but I don't want you to think I'm making it up. You all believe the Bible, don't you? All right, so if you believe the Bible, then we're good. Verse 26. For as the Father has life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Now watch this. And hath given him authority. Ooh, you missed a place to shout. God gave Jesus the authority, right? To execute judgment, right? Because he is the Son of Man. He's the Son of Man. You, I have authority because I'm the Son of Man. All right, glory to God. Now, this is so important. If you read through the New Testament, you will always see Scripture when Jesus is referring to himself. When he's introducing himself or talking about himself, he refers to himself as the Son of Man. If he would have ever referred to himself as the Christ, then he would have lost his authority. Now this, listen, 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 listen. Slap yourself in the face and pay attention. This is what confuses people, and a lot of new Christians ask this question where they say, well, when, when Adam lost his dominion and his authority, and he gave it over to Satan, why didn't God just take the dust of the ground and make another man and start over? Good question. But he couldn't. Why? Because the earth was given to men. He said the authority was given to men. We found that in the Psalms, didn't we? He said the earth, even the earth is the Lord's, but the authority and dominion he's given to the Son of Men. Amen. He's given it to us. So God then would have been illegally coming into this earth to make another man. He couldn't do it. But God had a way to get back in, amen, through Mary. Hallelujah. You see, demons it realized this, and they tried to get Jesus on several different occasions to admit that he was God. Let's look at this in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, look at verse 34. Saying, let us alone. Now, we got to the point here where uh, Jesus came into the area and these demons were possessing a person and um, they didn't want Jesus to cast them out. And watch this. They said, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Watch this. Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? Now you see, right now we know Jesus has the authority to cast them out. Right? But they didn't know everything. So watch this. I know thee, that thou art the Holy One of God. They knew. Right? And they knew that as God, he had no authority to cast them out. And if they could have gotten Jesus to admit that he was God, then the authority would have been gone. Amen? Jesus didn't answer him. You see, so many times we as human beings, we try to defend ourselves. You know, when you, somebody says so-and-so about you, such-and-such such about, well, you try to defend yourself. I don't have to prove to you anything. 
I don't have to prove who, anything to you. Well, you think that's your truck out there, Pastor? Well, I don't have to prove it to you. After church, I'm going to get in it and go. Well, I don't think that's your truck. What makes you think that's your truck? I don't have to defend it to you. I know who I am. Well, you think you're the pastor of this church? I don't have to defend that. Try to kick me out. You'll find out. <laughs> Who's in authority here? Try to kick me out. You'll find out. I don't have to defend it. Amen. No. <laughs> I had a couple of ushers one time come over to my house and they said, uh, if you come to church Sunday, we're going to kick you out. It's true. Yeah, they said, you and your wife need to get out of here and leave town, didn't they, Sheila? They said, your wife's got demons in her and if you show up at church, we're going to throw you out. And so we called a couple of friends of ours. We had a prayer meeting and said, well, Lord, do you want us to leave and go somewhere else? I don't need to put up with this garbage. And the Lord said, no, I put you there in authority. I want you to stay there. And he said, when you go to church Sunday, he said, this is what I want you to do, and I want you to handle it this way. And so we came to church Sunday morning, and they met me at the door. <laughs> I mean, they were outside the door. I, I, actually, I told Pastor Dorothy, I said, if you don't want to put up with this, I said, we'll go somewhere else. I said, I don't have to put up with this. She says, no, God sent us here. God wants us here, and we're staying here. So I walked up to the door, and they said, you showed up. I said, that's right. I said, you didn't elect me here. I got elected uh, by majority vote, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If you don't like it, you leave. That's right. You guys think that's funny, but you know what? I know pastors all over this state that they have got thrown out of the church. I got a friend of mine that went to a church and was pastoring. I guess he didn't know who he was. He showed up. There. They changed the locks on him. Yeah, one of, the, one of the ushers changed the lock. They called a locksmith, changed the lock. And it was, uh, I don't even know, I'm not going to tell you where it was, but <laughs> the majority of the church, the majority of the church was uh, made up with, uh, of Apache Indians that got converted, and they were, still had a lot of superstition and a lot of witchcraft. And so they got together when they threw him out. They, took, they cut off all of his food, and they got together and prayed over an owl and sent an owl over to his house. This is true, here in Oklahoma. And this owl sat on the roof of his house, and they cursed his house. And his daughter got diabetes and ended up in the hospital. Raymond graduate, he called me, and he said, Craig, I need help. He said, man, these people have thrown me out of the church. They've locked the doors. They've, they've cursed an owl, and it's sitting on my roof. And my daughter went to the hospital with diabetes. And I said, man, take authority over that. I said, did God tell you to pastor there? He said, yeah. I said, then don't leave. Don't run from there. If you do, you'll, be, you'll set yourself back years. I said, you know your authority. Take your authority. He said, I'm scared. So we got in the car. Our kids were little. We got in the car, drove all the way out there, and we cursed that owl, prayed for his daughter, made that owl leave. Glory to God. And then he packed his stuff and left and went back up north. Put his ministry back years. As a matter of fact, saw him at Winter Bible Seminar, still not in the ministry, 30-some years later. Guys, this is terrible stuff. Amen. you got to know who you are. Or the devil's going to push you around and run you out. Amen. Amen. I know another pastor, uh, pastored in Ponca City. He was praying, started a church in 1984, and, and you know, trying to, you know, get a church started, not realizing his authority. And he had a... Uh, they were praying for a building. And somebody came in and gave them $50,000 for a building project. Oh, what a bad thing to do. You know what happens to a new church when you, somebody gives you $50,000? They own you. Y'all listening to me? You see, money doesn't, I don't care if you give me $100,000. You're not running me out of town. You're not going to tell me what to do with the $100,000. Why are we on all this anyway? Talking about authority. If you know who you are, then you're just going to take your stand. I, Donald Trump knows who he is. I mean, you can't run that guy. You can't chase him out of town. You could take him to the OK Corral and he wouldn't bow down. He knows he's president. I don't care what you say about him. He's bold. Anyway, that pastor in Ponca City, 
It, it, it wasn't just a, a few weeks later. That person that gave him that money tried controlling the church, telling him what to do, ran him and his wife out of town. Pastor Bob was a regional director then, went up there and tried to talk to those people. And they, Pastor Bob said, you know what, just pack your stuff and get out of here and let them have it. And his wife and him left, and I'll never forget it. His wife said, you're done pastoring. If you pastor, I leave you. Go back into the insurance business. Never pastored again as far as I know. Guys, that's terrible stuff. And you know what? Those people curse themselves. Amen. And you know what? You need to take your authority. Realize who you are. Praise God. Say, I am. Son of the living God. I'm born again. Spirit filled. I have authority. The devil has nothing on me. I'm not afraid of him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, you really need to realize who you are. I like what Smith Wigglesworth said. He woke up one morning and the devil was standing at the end of his bed. He said, oh, it's just you. And he went back to sleep. That's right. Amen. He has no authority over you. Amen. I'm glad I know this. I have authority over demons and principalities and powers and familiar spirits. Has a familiar spirit ever manifest itself to any of you? You know what a familiar spirit is, don't you? That's a spirit that imitates a dead person. You know, this year in January, I may have told you when Pastor Dorothy and I were there at her mother's, her mother was in a, a rehabilitation center. We stayed in her home, and her mother has um, one of the rooms set up where we sleep, and she's got uh, uh, the memorial things of, of Pastor Dorothy's father and the flag and his Navy career and uh, got uh, a thing set up over in this corner of her brother with the guitar and his graduation when he got killed, and then her other brother, she's got the memorial of all three of these family members that have gone on to be with the Lord. She's got it set up in this bedroom. Well, that's where Pastor Dorothy sleeps, and then I sleep out on the couch because she's got a little tiny bed, and we don't sleep in a little tiny bed together. Back when we were 19 and we were all only 100 pounds, we could do that. But <laughs> anyway, we don't do that now. And so Pastor Dorothy left the room, and, she got, and I was in there getting ready, and all of a sudden, this, uh, this voice said, help me. And I really, the houses are real close together. And I thought it was a neighbor looking through the window or something. I thought he was in trouble. And there was nobody out there. And they said, help me. And I realized it was Pastor, uh, this familiar spirit was imitating Pastor Dorothy's brother, Keith. I said, in the name of Jesus, you just get out of here. And I never heard from it again. You see, you've got to know your authority. Or that thing will run you out. All right, let's talk about authority. Amen? Amen. These demons tried to get Jesus to confess that he was the Son of God. Jesus didn't answer him. You see, if a a familiar spirit ever does manifest itself to you, don't talk to it. It'll lie to you anyway. Don't talk to it and ask it, what is your name and all that kind of stuff. They have deliverance ministries where they set you down in a chair and they start asking you all of the names of these demons. They lie anyway. You don't have to know all of the names of all of these demons, and you don't have to go through all kinds of rituals trying to cast these things out, doing hooplas and whatever. You know what? Brother Hagin says there's just one way to cast the devil. In Jesus' name, get out of here. And then leave it alone. It has to go. Amen. So we don't have to identify it. Boy, this this is going different. Jesus didn't talk to him. Look at verse 35. Jesus rebuked him and said, shut up and get out of here. Right. Amen. The devil had thrown him in the midst and he came out of him and didn't hurt the guy. Amen. Jesus didn't try to identify him and talk with him. Turn to Matthew chapter 8. Let's look at verse 29. Hallelujah. I agree. Just laugh at the devil. Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. (laughs) If you're watching on TV, we just had a baby back there laughing at this devil, I guess. Matthew 8, 29. Behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of God? You see, now they're going to start using the name of God. They're going to try to preach. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? What time are they talking about? before this earth lease runs out, before it's time to cast them into the outer darkness, right? 
They, were, they didn't want to go to hell. Isn't that bad when demons don't even want to go to hell? You, I mean, you know hell must be a bad place if the demons don't even want to go there. They said, please don't cast us into hell. Let us go into the pigs. I mean, the pigs is pretty nasty, so hell must really be bad, right? Amen. Turn to Mark chapter 5, verse 7 through 8. I think I'm going to get you guys to where I want you to be tonight. Y'all bring your shouting shoes. Mark chapter 5, verse 7 through 8. They cried out with a loud voice, or he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? See, again, he's trying to get him to, con to confess that he's God, right? I adjure thee by God. Now he's really trying to use his what he thinks he knows. That thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. So again, these devils are trying to use God's authority uh, and get Jesus to confess that he's God. Amen. If he would have done that, guys, we would have lost our authority. Turn to Luke chapter 22. Let's look at verse 66. Now they arrested Jesus, getting, put him on a trial. They brought him for the elders and the scribes and the chief priests. And look at verse 66. You all there? And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I also ask you, you will not will you, ye will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man, see, what's he, he's standing there before them now, amen, they asked him if he was the Christ, he didn't say he wasn't, but he wouldn't answer them. He said, they said this in verse 68, and if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go, hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou the Son of God? And he said unto them, You said it. He didn't say it, did he? He wouldn't answer that. He would not confess that. Because he was here to defeat the devil. Not as God, but as a man filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, glory to God. I want you to get ready I've been trying for weeks to get you to where we're getting ready to go right now. I'm getting ready to show you that as God, God did not have authority on this earth. He turned it over to man. And Jesus as man showed us the authority that could be used by a man filled with the Holy Ghost. You gotta get, if you get this, you will understand something right now. That right now while we're speaking... There is a born-again, Holy Ghost-filled man sitting next to God. A resurrected man sitting next to God. John chapter 20, verse 17 through verse 19. All right, so now Jesus, as the Son of Man, came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Amen. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil as the Son of Man. Right? Now watch this. I want to take you to the next level and show you that as God, He had no authority on this earth. You're there? All right. Jesus said unto her, now this is after His death, burial, and resurrection. Right? All right. So Jesus said to her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. And so Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at the evening... Being the first day of the week, 
when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now watch what happened. Jesus raised from the dead. Mary saw him. He said, don't touch me. I haven't ascended yet. You see, he had to ascend to the Father, sprinkle his blood on the mercy seat. God anointed him with the scepter of righteousness and turned the whole universe over to Jesus because he just defeated the devil. So now watch. That's not where it is. He came back to the earth now. Now what? He was crucified as the Son of Man. He left all of his Godhead powers in heaven when he came here. We already showed you that. Now he goes back to heaven. Right? Then he came back to earth again. Now watch this. And he walked through the wall. The doors were closed. He was in his glorified body with all of his Godhead powers back in place. Now watch. This is where it gets really exciting. <clears throat> now watch. After his resurrection and his ascension into heaven, he was restored to his Godhead powers. This is the hypostatic union when God in his deity and Jesus in his humanity come together. That's the hypostatic union, all right? He's not limited to a physical body anymore. He doesn't have blood now. He's got a glorified body. But now this is, there's one thing different about Jesus' glorified body and your glorified body. When you're glorified, you're never going to have any scars, any surgeries that you had. All those railroad tracks and road maps are going to be gone. <laughs> all those stretch marks from delivering of babies, you know, it's all going to be gone. Any cut off fingers are going to be grown back. We're going to have all our body parts. You will have no scars. If you're over 30 years old, you're going to look like a 30 year old again. If you're a teenager, you're going to look like a 30 year old again. We're all going to be looking around here for like 30... We're all going to have hair again. No crow's feet. But one thing that Jesus has in his glorified body that you and I won't have is he still has the scars in his hands and in his side. You're going to see that right here. So he appeared to them. He walked through the wall. And he identifies himself now, not as the Son of Man, but as Christ. Luke chapter 24, verse 25 and 26. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought now Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Now, he's got his glorified body. He's in all of his Godhead power. Amen. Look at verse 34. He said, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared uh, to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do uh, thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you have seen me. Now watch. He's showing them in his humanity and his, in, in his deity. He said, I am the Christ, but look at me, I'm also man. Now, why is this important? Because, if you want to know, come back next week. <laughs> now, listen, okay, so he's restored in all of his Godhead power. He's not limited to a physical body now. He can transport at the, at the speed of thought. 
He can walk through walls and walk through doors, and yet he can still eat. You see, in your glorified body, you can eat if you want to, but you don't have to. Hello? You see, what's, what, this is so exciting to me because when the rapture comes, you're going to be in a glorified body. Amen? And so it's going to be great. We're going to be with Jesus for seven years during the uh, uh, tribulation period. And then after the tribulation period, if you, if you understand this and get this revelation, it'll just bless you. We're going to be coming back with Jesus to this earth. All of us that have gone on to be with the Lord before, all of us that are raised from the graves, and all of us that were raptured out are all going to have glorified bodies for all of the eons of time. We are going to come back to this planet, amen, in our glorified bodies. And then there are going to be people for the next thousand years during that millennial reign. After, after we're resurrected and after the seven-year tribulation, there will be no more glorified ones. You're going to be walking through the millennium and somebody's going to walk up to you and say, you're one of those glorified people. Can I ask you some questions? How was it when you had to fight against the devil? What did you do? How did you overcome that? Tell me some of the stories. Tell me some of the victories. Because they don't have to fight the devil. The devil's not going to be there. He's going to be locked up for a thousand years. They have no idea what we've gone through and how we defeated the devil. They're going to want to know, what was it like? Where did you learn all of this stuff from? Pastor Craig. (laughs) All right. So now, let's go back to where Jesus is, all right? He's raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, restored all of his Godhead powers, came back to earth, identified himself as Christ man, right? Now he's not limited to a a physical body, but this is what I want you to get. After this point, you can read it in all of the Gospels, he did not do any more miracles. He did no more healings. He did not cast out any devils. Why? Because he did not have authority as God. He couldn't. It was illegal if he would have done it. He did not have a natural human body anymore. It was a glorified body. Now, watch this. Let's begin to close this down. Y'all get anything? Why did Jesus come? Let's think about this now. Let's, let's just kind of summarize it. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Go back a little bit and let's talk about Jesus. For this purpose, the Son of God, this is the B part of verse 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus came. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power... And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen? So we see Jesus, the man, anointed with the Holy Ghost, went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Jesus, now watch this. Jesus came to show us how the authority of God's word would work through another anointed man. And it, it will work through you and through me as we begin to exercise it. Now, what we need to realize is that, yeah, okay, I've got all this knowledge now, but you've got to remember the disciples had to learn to walk in it as well. He gave them authority and sent them out, and they came running back. They said, we tried to cast the devil out, but why couldn't we cast him out? He said, because of your unbelief. Because you didn't believe that you had the authority that I told you you had. You see, you have to believe. 
Amen? Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 24. Let's look at verse 44 through 51. Now watch this. Let's go back to Jesus walking through the wall and standing in their midst. Now, from that point on, there were no more miracles, no more healings, no more deliverances. Watch this in verse 44. What did he do then? He said to them, verse 44, These are the words that I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. You see, if they would have read the scripture and gone to church and done their studying, they would have known all this. But they skipped Wednesday night church, so they didn't learn it. (laughs) Verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. If you are understanding anything that I'm saying tonight, it's not you that is getting it. The Holy Ghost has opened your eyes to it. Because there are a lot of people that want to know what you know and hear what you hear and understand what you are understanding, and they don't get it. They don't believe it. They'll fight you about it and get mad about it. But haven't I shown you in the Scripture? All right. So he opened their understanding, verse 46, And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that the repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You're witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. So he's telling them, All of this has taken place. I've been here, demonstrated it to you, and now I'm turning it back over to you so that you will go and preach and teach the resurrection power. Amen? Amen. Then watch, he led them out uh, as far as Bethany. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. For those of you that have a hard time raising your hands in praise and worship, I think Jesus is a good pattern, isn't he? He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. Hallelujah. So we just bless you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So let's summarize where we are tonight. Jesus suffered and he died and he rose again. Amen. Amen. Now he delegated that authority back to man. Amen. Amen. And so we're supposed to preach remission and repentance of sin and use our authority to keep the devil on the run. Now, he didn't tell you to go out and hunt for devils. He told you to go out and preach the gospel, and if you run into the devil, cast him out. Amen? Because, all right, let me ask you this. Is everybody in here, can you raise your hand? Everybody raise your hand. Let me see if you all can do that. All right, all right. Okay, that's, that's everybody in here. Okay. So now, how many of you were born of a woman? That's everybody in here. Amen. So that means you've got the authority now. If you're bo- How many of you are born again? That's everybody in here. So if you're born of a woman, born again, you are a candidate for the Holy Ghost to empower you to use the authority that you've been given. Amen. God will anoint you with that power if you're born again. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but this just rocks my world. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, we need to begin to walk in this authority. Amen. And use it. Now, next week, I'm going to dig it in a little bit deeper. And I'm going to begin to review, reiterate, restore, reshow you, get you keyed up so that you use this authority on a continual basis. There is no reason that any of us listening to this message tonight should be defeated in any area of our lives. If you will do what God says to do. When I finished this, I wrote this down on my notepad. I'm not going to tell you what it says. But I got the title of a message that I've never preached before. I'm going to put some meat to it. But eh, you better just come to church. You'll figure it out. Stand on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Dorothy, would you come up here tonight? Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Jedediah and Natalie. Come on up here, hon. 
I don't, I don't know if this is, if it's the Holy Ghost. I don't know if you're sick or if the Lord has just shown me you're sick or if you're tired or worn out, but I want to pray with you. I'm not, sh- I'm not sure if I'm looking at you and seeing that physically or if I'm seeing it in the spirit, but I believe you really need some prayer. Am I right? Okay. And, that issue. Yeah. and I, I really believe it's fear. I believe you're full of fear. And we don't want you to be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come as the authority of the church, Lord. And you said if they call for the elders of the church, we pray the prayer of faith over them. They'll be healed in Jesus' name. So we command this spirit of fear to loose her and let her go. And we command this sickness and disease to leave her body in Jesus' name. And Lord, you said that if we lay hands on the sick, that they should recover. And so we command whatever this is in her body, that it looses her and lets her go. And we, Lord, give her rest tonight. Let her sleep peaceably in Jesus' name. You said you would give your beloved rest. Hallelujah. 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 Help her, Father God. Give her peace that passes understanding from inside that she knows that somehow it's going to be okay. Jesus, you carried sickness, disease, by the stripes on your back. She is healed. And so we call her healed right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' name. Sleep well tonight. Sleep well. Sleep well. Sleep well. Sleep in Jesus' name. Sleep in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, um, I don't always get a chance to listen to our radio broadcast. Sometimes I'm in a place where I can't. But uh, Monday uh, and today, I had a chance to listen. Guys, you need to be listening to this week's message. If you Has anybody heard it? Nobody? If you're at a place where you can, you need to uh, listen to the message tonight. I mean, t- that's going on this week. Because it's backing up, it's confirming even more uh, of what we're talking about on Wednesday nights. So set your alarm for 2.15 and get up and w- listen to it in the morning. 2.15 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be sure and do that, Pastor. Yeah, we love you so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. I don't know if there's a way you can record it or not, but it's, uh, it's a powerful message. I, I don't know who has listened to it, but I thought, man, I preached it to myself be- several times before I got it on the radio, and I heard it today, and man, I just about tore my office up. <laughs> Guys, we love you all, and we will see you uh, Sunday. All right, Saturday, Jerry's got a class for new members. Come join us at New Beginnings Family Church, located in Mustang, Oklahoma, at 1615 East State Highway 152. You can find us online on Facebook and YouTube or at walkbyfaith.info. To contact us, call 405-261-6887. And remember, you don't need a second chance. You need a new beginning.